Hello, and welcome back to Mr. Moorhead Music and my series on film music. In this session, we are having a look at the 1930s and the 1940s. Now, I've nicknamed it the Golden Age of Film Scoring because there were fan some fantastic early scores being composed. Let's look at what we're doing today, though. We're going to look at a few changes to films and film music, and you are going to hear sound effects in music. And I want you to be able to kind of work out how the sounds are being made and why they've been added into the piece. So, the golden age. What do I mean by the golden age of film screen of film scores? Well, I mean this. Last time I mentioned that in 1929 everything changed, and it did. It was now possible to synchronise music and sound with pictures being shown. Which means you didn't just have the film and music being improvised. No, the music was being composed for the film and they were put together. And this changed the way films were being made completely. It meant that the job of film composer had now been created. People needed to write music for the movies. Now, no one had ever done this before. You had the people who did the improvisation in the cinemas and that was about it. And if you weren't going to use those, you would use someone that was composing for an orchestra, for concerts and things. But they weren't that used to composing for moving picture. So you had both sides. And during this time there were some hugely popular movies and some great uh, film stars were created during this time as well. So let's have a quick look at two examples. So 1933, uh, the first King Kong film came out. A huge 25 foot tall ape stood on top of the Empire State Building with fantastic music from Max Steiner. And in 1938, with music by Erich Colburn, The Adventures of Robin Hood, who starred names that became really popular. So Charlie Chaplin, Errol Flynn, Olivia de Havilland. During that time, loads of great films, loads of great film music. But we're going to look at just one film. We're going to focus on the Disney film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It was released in 1937, and it was the first full-length Disney production. Before this, they did some shorts, so little movies, uh, but this was the first full-length movie. They started production on it in 1934. And it took a lot of work. It was all brand new, everything they were doing. Now, Walt Disney was most excited about the use of the Seven Dwarfs in the story because he thought they would be great to, to make the audience laugh. And he thought the most important thing, more than important than anything else, was their names. He wanted their names to reflect their characters. So we had Doc the Boss and then Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, Bashful, Sneezy, Dopey. But they came up with over 50 names and then had to choose which ones would be best. Now, when Snow White came out, in 1938, the year afterwards, it was nominated for Best Musical Score at the Academy Awards. And the next year, Walt Disney was awarded an honorary Oscar for the film. Let's look at the two people who made the music happen. First, Frank Churchill the composer. He's from Rumford in Maine, in America, born on the 20th of October 1901. He began his career, interestingly, playing piano in cinemas at the age of 15. He then decided, after doing music for a while, that he was going to study medicine. Then he changed his mind. Partway through studying he went, no, I'm going to go and do music. I'm going to have a career in music. So in 1930 he joined Disney Studios and scored for many of the shorts that came before this. So you might have heard that the song Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? That was one of his songs and it was hugely successful. In 1937 he was chosen to score for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The reason for this? He wrote catchy songs. Uh, very cleverly written and because of that it made the songs really popular. Now the other chap sat there with him this is Larry Morey from Los Angeles in California 
born on the 26th of March 1905. And he was the lyricist. That means he wrote the lyrics, that means he wrote the words that are sung. And he co-wrote some of the most successful Disney songs, some of the most successful Disney films in the 1930s and 40s. So, in this film, Hi Ho, Someday My Prince Will Come, We Saw You Work, and he's also responsible, completely responsible, for changing the book by Felix Sultan, Bambi, in A Life in the Woods, to become the 1942 film Bambi. So what a great songwriting team. One has experience of working in cinemas and has written some songs already, and the other one has been working on songs. So I want you to have a listen to the song Hi Ho. It's a great song, and I had a look up, what does hi-ho mean? Well, it's an expression that means yawning, sighing, or kind of weariness, tiredness. So it's a song about being tired. It's a work song, it's a song about feeling tired. There's some amazing rhymes in this song, so I want you to be able to spot some rhymes for yourself. So, we dig, 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 in our minds the whole day through. We dig, 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 dig. It's a lot what we like to do. And there's some other great rhymes in there. So can you spot some of the rhymes in the lyrics? And throughout the animation, there's actions that fit with sound effects. So you can see them hammering, and you can hear the sound of them hammering. How many different times can you spot that the character is doing an action and there's sound effects that fit with the music. That's a challenge. Now, I've told you this is a work song. Does it fit the purpose? Does the music feel like they could be doing their job to it? Final question. Do you like this piece? Yes, no, and why? Now, once you've listened to it, you might want to listen to it a few times. It's only short. Another little challenge for you. Can you be a lyricist? Can you write some lyrics in the style of this song? So it's a work song, so pick a topic. So we plan and write our English tasks. We create people who wear masks. So maybe your character's wearing a mask. We must not forget to punctuate and get our homework in on date. Now, that's very simple. I'm sure you could come up with a better idea than that. But can you write some songs? with rhyming lines based on this kind of song using work, whatever type of work you want to, as a theme. So there's two challenges for you, a listening challenge and a writing challenge. Good luck and have fun.